Hello mate and welcome to an exciting new video. In this episode of Render Review, what I'm actually going to do is spend a bit of time reviewing one of my own renders from a while back. This is when I was still trying to figure out the ins and outs of Das Studio. So there's quite a lot to unpack in this one. If you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below or become a channel member entirely up to you. Support is always appreciated. So without further ado, let's jump into this then. So this is one of the very, very early renders of one of my games. And as you can see, what we've got here is the male character, Jake, is talking to his mum, Lucy, on the sofa. Um, as you can see, there's quite a lot of things wrong with this. So, if anything, what you should be taking away from this video is that even people like myself, who are now at probably what I would call a reasonable standard of Das Studio, had to start somewhere. So, the first thing that I notice about this render is that it is very barren. There's very little going on. What uh, I was dealing with back then when I did this render was hardware restrictions. I had a GTX 960 and this render on its own took somewhere in the region of probably about four and a half to five hours because that was pretty much the average time my renders were taking to complete back then. Uh, and as you can see, I've removed pretty much all the props from the scene to try and reduce that. Um, we've got a vase there on the side and we've got the sofa and we've got the two characters but other than that there's absolutely no niff naff and trivia in the scene whatsoever i hadn't yet figured out lighting properly so there is a bit of light coming in from the window behind the camera but there's nothing coming in from the window beside the characters and as you can see if you look out the window in spite of the fact that there is light coming in through the windows it looks almost like it's dark outside so not an ideal use of hdris in this case if i recall this wasn't actually lit by an HDRI. There was an HDRI on the outside, but because the light was so dim, I actually had a spotlight mimicking sunlight coming in through the window. So lighting is definitely back then not great. Needed vast improvements, which thank goodness I don't have to deal with anymore. And of course, hardware limitations made it incredibly difficult to preview the scene it, it, with the RTX 3080 that I currently use if I go into Nvidia iRay preview mode I generally get a rough idea of what the lighting is going to look like within I would say 20 seconds but with the GTX 960 that I was trying to use back then I would uh, probably imagine that it would have taken about five minutes for me to get anything useful out of the Nvidia iRay preview mode so yeah as you can see that's manifested itself in many many ways so looking at let's look at jake first because there's probably less to unpack with him firstly you'll notice that his uh, leg is clipping through the cushion that he's sitting next to which is something that i didn't notice when i did the render but uh, obviously in hindsight now now looking at it through a critical eye i can see that that's actually pretty bad how i didn't spot that i'm not entirely sure also what i will notice is that his foot is clipping into the sofa there it's not clipping in on this side it's resting on top of it so essentially what we are seeing here is his left foot the one that's tucked underneath him makes it look like this couch is rock solid and yet this one makes it look like it's well it doesn't actually sink in naturally anyway so that's bad clipping but there's no attempt to kind of flex the surface to make it look like the character is actually sitting in it not even in post-production which is obviously something that i would fix these days anyway one thing that i have done right is i've used one of his arms to conceal the fact that his shorts are rigid and digging into the back of his knee. So if, if his arm wasn't there, you'd be able to see that his shorts are digging right into the back of his knee and clipping through there. Um, obviously this bit here is bad anyway, because I would have converted this into a D-Force asset had I done this render nowadays, so that it would uh, relax naturally, but back then didn't know anything about it. In fact, this render was pre-D-Force, so even had I known about it, probably wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. 
Or, mm, thinking about it, no, this wasn't pre deforce. This was early deforce, not pre deforce. There was actually deforce because I used it on this hair on Lucy, and I believe I used it on his vest as well. So, another problem that we can see is because his vest is long, it tucks, it goes round past his glutes. What's happened is that the person who created the asset has rigged it so that it will tuck underneath when he bends his legs. So, what we have here is he's actually his vest rather than relaxing naturally back this way which is what a vest in the real world would do it's actually gone under his bum and is tucked all the way around like that instead which is you know not ideal but again back then wasn't much i could do about it uh, i believe i did convert this vest into a d force asset at some point but obviously not round about this render as you can see by the way that it's poking up away from his shoulder there and not resting on his shoulder Another thing that I would say I needed to improve on for this render was the skin color of this character. Bear in mind that these are mother and son, i.e. they shouldn't look that dissimilar unless obviously his father was of a different ethnicity. However, he wasn't in the story. They were Caucasian. So the fact that he's so deeply tanned again is something that back then I didn't really know very much about the surfaces tab. However, nowadays, obviously, I would make adjustments to correct the color of his skin. In fact, in the more recent re um, renders that I've done for this game, they are in fact the same color. OK, so I think that's pretty much it for Jake. He's he is neutral he's got a neutral face expression but that was actually by design so one of the things that i normally pick up from other people is not using a facial expression but he's actually meant to be staring vacantly at the floor so not something that i need to pick up in this one but having said that if i didn't do this render myself and i didn't know that he was supposed to be looking off into the distance then i might have picked that up as something that i needed to be improved upon hard to say what's going on with his shoulder in his hand purely because the render is low resolution and you can't actually tell whether there's clipping going on there or not. So again, that's something that I would probably fix if I was doing the render now. So now we're gonna jump across to Lucy and there's a bit more to unpack here. Firstly, the pose is horrendous. Um, this is a store-bought pose and back then I didn't really know very much about correcting the poses. I was just kind of like many people that I see nowadays, just get them into a factory pose and leave them and then just change their translation, i.e. move them up, down, left and right until they're vaguely close to where I need them to be. As you can see from here, the legs are clipping into each other. The right leg is pushed across the left knee and is actually clipped in there. What you can also see is that the left foot is clipping through the floor and the right foot is barely touching the floor so she's not actually supporting her weight with her right leg whatsoever um, she's apparently putting so much force into her left foot that she's actually sinking through the floor what we can also see is that her bum is clipping into the sofa and not in a good way again if this were to happen in to me now what i would do is i would fix it in post by adding shadows and making it look like the couch was actually flexing under her weight and that she was sinking into the couch however um, back then it didn't occur to me to do that because i was trying to much like many people trying to mass produce these images trying to push out an update every month to keep the patreon happy um, without actually giving any regard to the quality of the images suffice to say that nowadays i know better another thing that i've noticed without uh, not to do with lucy is that the couch is actually clipping through the motel wall there so I've obviously pushed it too far up and it's evident if you look at this surface here you can see that it's about two inches too far over to the left and it's clipping through the wall again another schoolboy error that I was making when I was still trying to figure Dad's studio out next thing is her eyes are looking absolutely nowhere towards Jake she's looking off out the window which means that they are either both on the spectrum or or she's talking to somebody out of the window, but she's not. She's meant to be having a conversation with Jake, but she doesn't appear to be looking at him whatsoever. Ignoring the fact that she's massively overposed for someone. Why she's doing this weird stretching motion, I think it was just because I needed her to be doing something other than 
sitting in the A pose or the T pose because these were Genesis 3 back then. I have obviously since upgraded Lucy twice from Genesis 3 to Genesis 8 and then from Genesis 8 to Genesis 8.1 and made tweaks and improvements to her as time has progressed to make her look more realistic. So she's not looking anywhere near him and she also has a completely neutral facial expression so it just looks like two people passively sitting in the same place but not actually having a conversation but in the uh, game at this point they were actually having a deep and meaningful conversation. Um, this arm is in a really awkward pose and her hand is partially poking through the sofa. Her little finger and I believe her ring finger are actually sticking into the sofa so again another minor oversight on my part there. And again, as I said, this arm, I don't really know what I was thinking when I put her in this pose, but there you go. The hair has got D-Force applied to it, but because it wasn't a D-Force model, this is a solid model that I turned into D-Force hair. It's kind of weird, it hangs down, a bit strange here, but at least it is hanging down. So in my defense, it was a good first attempt, but this was early D-Force and, you know, things aren't always perfect. Last thing I notice is that the quality of the clothing. Now, what I have done to this vest, or rather what I had done at the time, was again, converted this vest into D-Force, but I didn't know enough about the surface properties and the D-Force simulation properties to actually get it to work correctly. So what you can see is that it's all bunched up around her waist here and pinched and it looks weird. Um, it's really, really jagged around the underarm and breast area there and then there's a weird sticky out a bit there which just looks wrong and then as I said but the way that the whole thing has fallen around the neckline as well it looks like the dress is made out of very very overly um, stiff fabric too much starch maybe in the washing who knows and then the last thing that I want to mention that I've noticed now is that this pillow looks like a pancake it's flat um, not entirely sure if that's my fault or the asset creator because it looks like that one and that one are both very flat as well. So maybe just laziness on the part of the asset creator. But um, again, something that I probably should have noticed and had I been as experienced then as I am now, I would probably just make it, delete them if they are deletable. And if they aren't deletable, I would make them uh, the surface properties of the, those three pillows make them invisible and then replace them with pillows that are perhaps proper you know fat pillows that don't look like pancakes that would be that would probably be my go-to uh, answer to that one and obviously i would have a lot more props around the scene because there's a lot of negative space around here looks like very barren there no pictures on the walls or anything back here making it look pretty boring and again, not even a rug on the floor here. That's how desperate I was to try and save memory back then. So a lot of work um, needed to be done back in those days to learn. And as I said, I've learned all about Das Studio. I'm still not perfect. I'm still not an expert, but I know enough to make reasonable renders nowadays. So yeah. Thanks very much for watching this, guys. I hope you found that useful, entertaining, if not slightly shocking. Yes, even I, once upon a time, was doing really, really terrible renders. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.